when did you hear about the war? What did you think about it? And what was the reason of your decision to go to Ukraine to fight for our people? Uh, I heard the news at my work. Uh, I used to work at the Swedish Armed Forces, so it was on the news and uh, yeah, it moved me quite a lot. I think it's like it's very provocative and just thing to do. And so I quit my job basically and just yes, spent that week to prepare to go down. Um, I was pretty angry also. And the decision for me to go is like if your neighbor's house burns, you know, you go and help them put out the fire. You don't just sit there and do nothing, you know. It's weird for me. It's so close to Sweden also. It's just uh, the Eastern Sea, Poland, then you're in Ukraine, you know. Have you ever been in Ukraine? <laughs> Uh, no, but I have uh, some friends that's from there, yes. What was your emotion, you know? What was your feeling when you decided to go? I was very upset, like, the first couple of days I was so upset just seeing this over and over on the news, like every day, you know. I was so upset with it, like, I couldn't not do it. It's a weird feeling when you just decide, you know. Uh, and when I decided in my head, I became calmer, you know, I wasn't that upset anymore, so yeah, I just went to my girlfriend, told her like I'm going, and uh, then we fixed everything and I went. How she <laughs> got it? Um, she knows I'm a very stubborn person, you know, and when I decide something, she knows it's, I'm gonna do it, like, so she did her best to help me with all the admin stuff, you know. And uh, yeah, she was a huge help for me to be able to go and deploy like within one week, uh, getting all the stuff and everything, you know, it was like working from the moment I wake up to like 12 o'clock, just running around, uh, fixing stuff so I can go. Was it difficult to prepare for your trip uh, to gather all equipment? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it's very expensive to be a soldier, like <laughs> when you pay it for yourself, it's very, very expensive. Uh, and also there's not like that much of stores in Sweden about for that kind of stuff so yeah it was like a marathon just running around every place getting like good socks good boots mm. and it, because it was a war like all the preppers in Sweden had bought up all the stuff and also contractors from like uh, yeah for contracting supplies for Ukraine also bought up everything in store so like mm -hmm. it was very difficult to find good supplies uh, during that time oh, no. uh, but I may do I may do <laughs> What uh, may be some bureaucracy on this way? Do you have do you had such problem uh, here in Sweden and in Ukraine? Uh, in Sweden, nothing. Like I went to the Ukraine embassy in Sweden. Mm -hmm. I just talked to them. It's like okay, cool, we fix it. And then uh, I was like, got the green light so I can enter the border. Uh, and Ukraine, you know, it's very famous for its bureaucracy. Oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. But it went uh, well enough. We had some bureaucracy problems, but uh, it kind of got sorted. So how it was? You came to Ukrainian embassy and said, I want to fight for you, or how? Yeah, so they have like the Swedish company here that's formed here in Sweden, mm -hmm. where they like have volunteers, and now they're fixed so they can like go and deploy with the contract. But uh, I went before it was like established. So I was like one of the first to go down. Uh, and I went to Lviv because uh, we were scared to go on the northern border crossing because of uh, oh. Belarus, you know, yeah, yeah. we didn't know if they going to invade us. We went to Safeway, we went to Lviv yeah. and uh, yeah, they w we went to a base close around there and uh, was stationed there for a while. Mm -hmm. We got our papers sorted, but you know, uh, bureaucracy stuff and the paper gets lost. We had to fix that some couple of times, but it oh. was okay, you know. Uh, How long? I was maybe one week in the base, maybe somewhere around there, and uh, yeah, then a rocket hit us, <laughs> well, a lot of rockets, and then we uh, redeployed. Mm -hmm. And yes. uh, they uh, give you like a way to where, to where you have to go, oh, or no. arm, what, <laughs> what team you have to join? <laughs> Uh, yeah, we had a really good team set up. Everything was good, but you know, the rocket hit, confusion, you know, and 
in the beginning not so many like good people were there like it was many civilians you know mm. uh, which not good they all got scared and deserted mm. that's good because you don't want them there so basically like half my group also deserted because i don't know why you know i never spoke to them after that but uh, a lot of weird stuff happened when we got hit you know uh, but we managed to get back mm -hmm. on track you know so that's good uh. How, how did you appear at Mikolaev army? What was um, the way and uh, what was your specialization here? So my specialization is like yeah, marine infantry combat. And uh, yeah, I've been doing a lot of stuff like in Swedish military. So uh, yeah, heavy weapons mostly and communication. And uh, yeah, that's what I did. I uh, did some education on the NATO standard weapon, like uh, 50 cal machine gun and uh, grenade, uh, 40 millimeter, no, Mark 19. Its name is Mark 19 in English. There are problems with the okay. English names. Um, I educated some, uh, how do you say, like uh, local, like Spetsnaz, Ukrainian Spetsnaz, mm -hmm. on how to use them because they got the, Got some uh, NATO standard like weapons. You were like an instructor. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Also that, you know, to help them out with that. But uh, before I came to Mikolaev, I went to Kiev. Uh, they, from Lviv. Yeah, from Lviv. They told us that we we're going to deploy in Kiev, but that didn't happen. So we were like in uh, somewhere in Kiev, waiting to get like official documents. I showed you my passport that I got. Yeah. It's not a passport, it's book, but uh, yeah. So we got that. So we got the official documents, and we were supposed to get paid and stuff. Mm -hmm. And after that, we went down to Mikolaev. Mm -hmm. Yes, the longest bus journey of my life. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then I got sent there, and yeah, we yeah we got like uh, what do you say, uh, housed, accommodated in an area mm -hmm. where there was like some uh, some soldiers. Not like regular army soldiers, you know, but uh, more like special forces. Mm -hmm. So we were there and we tried to like make friends with them and like try to work with them. And uh, yeah, we were in the end, like we became good friends and we started to work together. Mm -hmm. we, like, sent, we sent out like sections of our group to go with them just to see how they work and they can see how we work and you know, build, build a nice connection. Like mm -hmm. that's very important. Uh, did they understand English? Can speak? Uh, some spoke uh, English a bit, but we had a translator, a guy who oh. spoke uh, Russian. He so, already, he yeah. always were with you? Uh, right. Yeah, he was one in our group. Oh, uh, so basically, okay. he he talked for us. Okay, okay. And uh, it was you and your friend? Uh, yeah, and our whole group that we had. The ones that were left from the first desertion, basically. <laughs> Okay, yeah. and uh, how, how can you describe Ukrainians as soldiers, as your brother by weapon? Can you describe brave. them? Like Very brave. They're like, the things they like can do, uh, it's very brave, like they, they just fucking do it, you know? And a lot of heart also. Very, very passionate, you know? Of course. Yeah, uh, I like them a lot. Where are you at? other wars maybe around the world I have not actually so it was your yeah i've been like first. in the swedish armed forces for maybe seven eight years and i was never deployed i was supposed to be deployed but never happened so this was my first time but my friend that i went with uh, he has been in like seven wars maybe i think wow. yeah like by the contract uh yeah with the uh, First, uh, in his own country when I was young, and the rest is uh, by Swedish armed forces. He's deploying different places. For those who never see like war, yeah. how can you describe uh, the one day, one day in the war, or one day of soldiers' life? Yeah, it's it's so different. All depends on where you are and what's happening, you know. Because war can maybe be like you get shot a lot and stuff like that, like all the time. Or it can be like you're, you're sitting, nothing happens, you sit there and maybe you can... Like I was very close to the enemy, but I didn't shoot, we didn't shoot at each other because they didn't know I was there because mm. I was uh, observing them. Uh, so nothing basically happened, but you know, it was very sweaty because mm. could, I, I could hear them cough and talk, you know. 
But if I sh thought to shoot at them, like I couldn't see them uh, visibly, but I could hear them because it was bushes I was hiding, you know. So, but if if you start shooting them, then you're fucking dead, you know. So, okay. a lot of different things, but they in the world can be chaotic, calm, both sometimes. You, you just you get up and do this thing and do this, and then you come to sleep. Is yeah. it is it uh, possible to sleep? Yeah, you, yeah so you will there? sleep. You will sleep. You you get tired. It's uh, it's hard work, and you get mentally tired too because so much stuff is happening. You have to be observant. You have to look at stuff and think a lot, you know. So you get very tired. But uh, yeah. How how you can help you, but yourself uh, in such stressful situation? You go at first time in, in the battle. Yeah. How you help yourself? Uh, first time I got shot at, I was like. I just did like what I've been training for a lot of time, just get down, prepare, like we got shot at by, by a BMP uh, and I prepared anti-tank weapon, but uh, nothing more happened, you know, uh, we still had good cover, if we shoot back now we don't, we don't have anything to shoot on, firstly, you know, so just, uh, just get down and calm and yeah, we retreated that day because we couldn't push forward anymore. So yeah, you just uh, relax and do do your drills. <laughs> How can you describe uh, Ukrainian commanders or like leaders? Mm. Are they good or you have some problem maybe with them? Uh, both, but mostly very good. You mm. know, it's good guys do what they can. You know, it's li they have limited supplies, limited communication. Like uh, you do your best with what you have. You know, mm. like good people. Uh, but I also heard of some like that was uh, maybe very like macho bravado is doing that kind of stuff and didn't go too well for them, you know. But uh, like most of people I met is very good. Mm -hmm. What were your achievements about this time in Ukrainian army and uh, did they become true? Or you opened something new about yourself and about all mm. of this experience? I didn't really have any goal more than like my goal. Maybe my goal was to do something, you know, uh, with the tools that I have, you know, being a soldier for so long. Uh, but yeah, I didn't really have any goals. I used to, used to complete the mission, you know, whatever mission we have, you know, try to complete it. Very simple. Yeah, very simple, you know, uh, because war is very chaotic, so it's easy to be, just be simple. Did the war change? something inside of you yeah it did but what like I find like the normal life here like it's not fun for me uh, it's it's like watching people being in the hamster wheel kind of thing you know mm -hmm. uh, yeah it's something that I work on you know might change my opinion uh, yeah. How, how long uh, have you been in the army, in Ukrainian army? I was in Ukrainian army for three months. Three months. Yeah. My girlfriend forced me home, so <laughs> it only became three months, unfortunately. Okay, so it's ended for you now, this story. With yeah. The war, you, you did something, what yeah. you want, yeah. what you can, do your best and came back uh, at home. Yeah, I did something, you know. Okay. And it's enough for you? Yeah, it's for, enough for me. Okay. For now, I for think. Now. Maybe there's something else I can do in the future when it's over, you know. Mm -hmm. Maybe help rebuild or something. Uh, we will see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But for now, this is like all I can do. Where are you at the moment of death and life during these three months um, or not? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So the first rocket that fell on the base when, when I first was at lab nearly Lviv, like it hit maybe around 100 meters from me, from me. and uh, yeah, it was a lot more rockets coming, but a lot of them got shot down by Ukrainian pilots, it was very thankfully, you know, <laughs> uh, so yeah, almost got blown up there, um, and then sometimes in uh, Mykolaiv also, um, I got shot at a lot with artillery when I was in the front line outside Mykolaiv. Yeah. Okay, can you explain a little what are you thinking in such moments? Or it couldn't explain? Like, you get used to it, like, 
you oh. yeah you get used to everything in life basically so where well, when you deploy you you like it's regular to get like mortars or artillery landing around you like in the proximity mm -hmm. sometimes it's far away like a kilometer sometimes it's 500 meters and if you're real unlucky it's like within 50 meters or 100 meters you know uh, and that like happens throughout the day as well likely, you know so you get used to it uh, but when it's like really close you know you get a bit up edge you know but uh, <clears throat> it's funny because in the beginning I always thought it was so close the shells were landing because the glass was like buckling in and stuff but it was every time it happened it was fine so my thing is like if the glass don't break you're safe you know <laughs> oh, yeah. mm. Mm. what was the main thing you understood uh, during this time in Ukraine about yourself maybe about your life here in Sweden, you know, so. mm. I the pressure life a lot, you know. Uh, it's nice to be alive. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Also, that I like to do meaningful things. I really have a hard time doing stuff that I don't like find meaning in. It's, it's very hard for me now. So I get like mental pain to do stuff like that I don't think is important. Mm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, when you returned to Sweden, what did you first? Maybe what you, how you change your life or maybe mm. work or something? Um, I was very tired when I come home, you know, because then you can like finally relax. So you like get into this like sleeping mode for a while. And I just had a bit of vacation. I got sick <laughs> during my vacation. And... Mm. Uh, then I started to work again, mm -hmm. doing uh, yeah, some you, stuff. You return uh, to your job? Yeah, to uh, yeah to my side job that I know is my main job. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, do, you, do your colleagues know where you were? And yeah, yeah, yeah. They all know where I was. I'm very supportive. Also, I got uh, some help from them as well. Mm -hmm. So and yeah, all the help that I got was. Uh, very needed you know mm -hmm. also down in ukraine sorry for the sidetrack but like a lot of the supplies that you get like on the front line is donations like you will come like a little civilian truck with like uh, a box of uh, wet wipes and like regular jarred food you know that mm -hmm. people donated mm -hmm. in ukraine or whatever you know we have like these old ladies who make like a lot of uh, food <laughs> and uh, in the bucket of borscht you know <laughs> uh, and please tell me about your maybe impressions about Ukraine, uh, Ukrainian people, Ukrainian some stuff in the cities, uh, uh, what you remember. Yeah, like, I like it, like, I like Ukrainians, they're very funny, you know. Uh, sometimes it can, like, be hard to, like, break the wall because, they yeah, I'm a foreigner, you know, it's a war. And sometimes I walk in uniform, like, but when you, when you break through with someone, like, it's always funny, you know. Mm -hmm. It's hilarious. Good times. Swedish news. Are they uh, give the right picture uh, here about the war in Ukraine? Because you were inside of this and you can mm -hmm. see now them. Uh, is it uh, uh, trustful? I only watched uh, like the news from like before I went till I went. Then I was like down there. So I don't know what they reported on like okay. when I was not there. But everything that I have seen uh seems to be true you know like mm. all the stuff in bucha and all that stuff like mm. yeah, i think it was covered pretty good you know so swedes they can understand what's going on yeah 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 um yeah but i met some like people here who's like this weird you know uh russian sympathetic thing you know yeah, yeah. but everyone else you know mm -hmm. seems to get what's happening so how can you Explain a little what this war about, like a global. Mm. What is your opinion? I think like it's just one of Russia's many like imperial wars, you know, to expand and get resources, you know, and stuff like that, mm -hmm. uh, to show how mighty they are, how big and strong they are, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, that and resources, I think. Because like Ukraine has like is like the grain capital of the world. Mm -hmm. Don't you disappoint on your decision to go to Ukraine? 
do you get uh, this experience that you wanted? Uh, yeah, like I knew before I went down what like I could expect, and I got what I could expect, and it all went to expected, you know. Okay. So yeah, it's all good. What people here in Sweden need to know about the war in Ukraine? Maybe you knew something that you need to share here. And why why Europe really need to support Ukraine in this way? Like when you're on the front line, you can really see the help that comes in, like like Swedish anti-tank weapons, Swedish ball arms. Like I've seen them in the field, like seeing some Ukrainian blokes pop up from the hole and he has the Swedish like army body armor. Like it was mm -hmm. hilarious with all the like uh, Swedish armed forces signature mm -hmm. stuff. And, uh, yeah. And uh, yeah, all like all the anti-tank weapons is like mostly from Western. You know? And that's very good. It's very good. So it really does a lot, you know, all the weapons they've sent, all the food and stuff, you know, it really, really helps. Like it's being used daily and a lot. Mm -hmm. But why, uh, why we need, why we in Ukraine need such support? Why we need to, to win? <laughs> Can you? To get your country back. It was stolen, you know, unrightfully. You can't just go in and just fucking take, you know. But is it important for Europe too, or is it just Ukrainian war? It's important for the whole world, because as I said, like Ukraine is the capital of grain. And if you control the food, you like control the world kind of thing, you know. And a lot of countries going to suffer because of this war, you know, because you don't get the grains out, people will start to starve, like not maybe not in Europe but like other countries so mm -hmm. it's a big problem what's happening for like everyone basically mm -hmm. because uh, yeah grain is going to get more expensive so it's going to be more expensive to buy bread and all the other stuff that's associated with that you know mm -hmm. so like what side you're on wouldn't matter because you will get affected by it anyway so I think like Ukraine's problem is the world's problem do you remember some Ukrainian words maybe you <laughs> no, some, something from our language. Uh, or... uh, yeah, when you go like to buy stuff, you get they ask if you want a bag, and you say uh, if you want a big bag or small, uh, malinki or uh, bolshoi. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Jaku. laughs> do, do you know this phrase "Доброго вечора, ми з України"? Yeah, I have it on my patch. Uh, can you tell? Yeah, <laughs> I don't remember the exact translation. But it's like uh, "Good morning, I'm from Ukraine." No? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Dobroho vechera, good evening. Yeah, good evening, yeah. yeah, yeah. But can you explain, no, tell me this phrase in Ukrainian? No, no I, I only heard it once and it was from my friend. Uh, oh. Uh, okay. That was a trade attached with. But I laughed a lot when I heard it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you risk with your life for other people, for other country, not your country, you know. And mm. it's so, it's so brave uh, and so interesting why you make such a decision. So I am so thankful for for your fighting for my country and for this conversation with me because I think we need to gather such stories because people in Ukraine sometimes and uh, with the every day of the war sometimes we can lose our hope. So we need to know that mm. people in the world they not just support with words, but with uh, their actions, you know? Mm. So thank you very much for this. Thank you.